Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Hopefully you're having a great day. In today's video, we are going to be starting a brand new series called How to Create a Simulator in Roblox. Now, I've watched a bunch of tutorials previously when I was actually learning how to script in Roblox to create my own simulator. And the thing that I found is a lot of these tutorials are either outdated or don't include all the features of current modern day simulators. I'm telling you, a lot of the series that I've seen don't actually include or teach you how to use data store, so your data is always saved for all of your players. They don't teach you how to make quests or nice GUIs, settings, they also don't teach you really how to make a pet system, how to make some boosters, a trading system, a map so that you can teleport around all of your different areas, or even like local objects so that you can have these sort of walls between areas for players who haven't unlocked them yet. That's just a couple of the things that we'll be covering in this series. The gameplay that you're seeing right now is of the simulator that I've created myself, so I will be showing you how I created all these systems on my own. Since my simulator actually isn't that popular, I'm going to base our own simulator in this entire series off of the eating simulator right here because this seems like a lot more of a popular and very common theme where you have an item in your hand you click it you gain a currency and then you sell it and upgrade and do all the exact same things i've seen a lot of simulators use this exact model and system over and over and over again so that's why i want to base the series off creating something like this because it seems to be the most common additionally even if you don't want to make a simulator it's a great way to learn a lot of different systems in roblox as well as learning a lot of scripting and you can take these systems into a ton of different game modes. With that being said, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you guys out, make sure you hit the like button and also hit the subscribe button if you guys want to see some more Roblox development videos. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me or gain access to all the scripts and game files that I actually make in this video, you guys can go subscribe to my Patreon. There's a link down below in the description to it. And you can literally get access to all the scripts that we make. You can basically get a completely made simulator at the end of this series by just subscribing to the Patreon. Link down below in the description if you guys want to check it out. Also, if you have any questions, leave in the comment section down below and let's get right into it. Okay, so I just created a brand new fresh base plate and let's begin. So every single simulator has specific currencies. Usually they have coins and one other currency. So let's get started on creating the currency system. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to server script service and we are going to create a brand new script and let's name this player data. Now let's go ahead and remove this print statement and let's actually create a local function and we're going to name this set up player data and we are going to take the player as a parameter now if you guys are unfamiliar with what i did right here with the semicolon and player basically that is the parameter and it's identifying what the parameter needs to be so right here we are always going to want to pass in a player object otherwise another example would be like if we want to get the name of the player we could say that the name would always be a string object so that's actually what it would be you don't need to do that at all we literally don't need to do it like that but i like to do it just to keep everything organized and i think that's something that people People should do eventually but if this does confuse you you can literally ignore this it's not a big deal at all so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the leader stats and we're going to actually assign that to a variable so what we're going to say is local leader stats equals instance dot new so we're creating a brand new instance and we're creating a brand new instance of a folder and we're setting the parent of that folder to the player now the way that people usually do this is just by simply creating the folder and then you would say leader stats dot parent equals player and that would make the parent of this folder the player but you don't actually need to do this and the reason you don't have to do that is because instance.new actually accepts two parameters and the second parameter would be the parent and we could see that on the screen right now so rather than saying leader stats.parent we can literally just say parent right here and it saves us one whole line of code i know it's crazy right now after that we're going to set the name property of leader stats to leader stats exactly how i type this out you need to make it exactly how we type it out because that's how roblox identifies the leader stats and handles it that way now we have to make all the currencies that we want to display on the leader sets so we can say local food food's going to be one of our currencies so we're going to say local food equals instance dot new and we're going to make a brand new instance and this time we are going to make an int value instance which is basically a number and then we're going to set the parent of food to leader stats now remember leader stats parent is player so player owns leader stats and then leader stats owns the food value and then we are going to set the name of food so food dot name equals food and I like to capitalize this you don't have to you can do it however you want but remember consistency is key you might be thinking well this is lowercase yes the way that I handle this is sort of all folder names or directories in certain areas of the data will be maintained as lowercase while like the values such as int values and things like that will actually be uppercase and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the value of food to zero because we want the player to start off with zero food additionally we're going to make another currency and we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to say local coins equals 
equals instance instance dot new int value and we're going to parent that once again to the leader stats and we're going to say coins dot name equals coins and of course we're going to say the value of this is equal to zero so the player starts off with zero coins now we're just about done with this but we now need to actually assign this to the player or run this function for the player when they join the game so we are going to get a brand new service and we're going to initialize that at the top of our script and we're going to say local players equals game get service and we're going to say players and then what we're going to do at the bottom of the script is we're going to say players dot and then we're going to look for an event and the event that we're going to look for is player added and then we are going to say connect and we are just going to say set up player data so now what this should do is once the player is added to the game which basically means joins or connects to the game it will run this function and it'll automatically pass in the player parameter so let's go ahead and start our game and see if this works and as we can see this worked perfectly we can see the leaderboard is indicated up here it says food and coins both of them are set to zero and people has monster under it that's exactly what we wanted also you might see one of these errors down here that's literally just from one of my plugins that i have i should not install it but you can completely ignore this you should not see this at all so let's go ahead and stop our game because we can see that that's clearly working we can also play around with this as this is your first time you might want to just set one of the values to five and then you can actually see also changed on the leaderboard right here that's pretty cool just a sort of a little learning experience but anyway of course i'm going to set that back to zero okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a brand new function and we're going to say give player currency and this is sort of so that you guys can slightly understand how it works and we can verify that everything works correctly so inside of here we're going to say is while true do and this is basically creating an infinite loop we're never going to make this false so this loop will always run and the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to say task dot wait one so this will wait one second and then what we're going to do is we're going to say player and then we're going to find the leader stats inside of that player food dot value so what this is doing is it's going to look inside of player and then remember we're parenting leader stats to the player so we're going to go inside a player we're going to look for the leader stats and then remember we parented food to leader stats so then inside of leader stats we're going to look for food and then since food is an int value we can say dot value to get the value of food remember we set the value right here so it should equal zero but then what we're going to do is we're going to say that the value is actually plus equals to one now what plus equals means it might be a little bit complicated we can say just equals for right now and what that would be is literally just this it basically just adds the number to itself and that's exactly what we want to do so we just want to add one currency to the value every single time that's why we use plus equals rather than writing this out because it's just ugly and just more work okay so now what this is going to do is every single second it's just going to increase the player's food by one and we can also do it for coins as well so now we're going to increase the player's coins and food by one every single second and then let's also make sure that we run this function right here so then let's go ahead and run the function and pass through the player right there and we can start the game and then we can see on the leaderboard the food is going up every single second by one that's exactly what we wanted okay so now a really big key component of the currency system is we want a way to display it to the player besides just the leaderboard at the top right of the screen so what we're going to do is we are going to go to starter gui we are going to create a brand new screen gui because you always need to create a screen gui and we're going to rename this to currency gui and then inside of the currency gui we're going to want to actually insert a brand new frame and we're going to rename that frame to currency holder so then usually at least for the example simulator that we're actually using the currency would be like right around there and then inside of here we are actually going to add a brand new text label so then what we're going to do is for the currency holder frame we're actually going to set the background transparency to one and that'll basically make it invisible now actually rather than having a text label let's go ahead and insert another frame and we're going to name this food okay so now we have a lot more to actually play around with and then for size let's make sure that we set this to one comma zero comma one comma zero and that will scale it you always want to be using scale when you're working with GUIs because if you don't use scale and you actually do it to mobile you can see this appears so much larger on mobile than it does on PC and we don't want that 
There's a really nice plugin that kind of does this for you. It's actually called the Auto Scale Light. I'll leave a link down below in the description and you use the unit conversion and you can click scale on whatever you want. That includes the frames that we're using. And now that we click that, we can see that it appears the same exact size on both platforms. Now that we have our food frame, uh, we actually want this to be a little bit larger. So what we could do is we can actually increase the parent frame size a little bit. Let's say for the parent size, we want it to be uh, a little bit larger. So I'd say, I'd say about that large like that's pretty good right there 255 by 100 that's a decent size okay so now we're gonna do is the background a color of this is about a blue so let's say uh like a bluish like that it's a little bit of a different color but that's fine that works and then their button is actually rounded so we're gonna add a ui corner to it this is actually how you make it rounded and it looks like it might be a 15 eh, yeah it's no probably like a 25 that looks pretty similar and then inside of here we're gonna add a brand new text label we're gonna rename this to amount and then we're going to go to text. We're going to set the scaled property to true. Let's set the text color to white and let's set the background color to completely transparent. And then uh, let's put that like right there. Make sure we hit scale on that bad boy. And then let's actually change it to what it should sort of look like. So one out of 30. And then also the font that I like is, uh, I like to use a variety of the Gotham font. So we're gonna set that to Gotham black and that should be pretty good. And then what we're gonna say is we'll just duplicate this. I do control D. I like to duplicate rather than inserting a brand new text label because it saves all the properties that we've already changed that we just have to like change some of the properties. So now I'm gonna change I'm going to rename this to title and for the text, I'm going to set it to food. And then what we want to do is we want to make this definitely smaller. I'd say about that size is pretty good. And then I think we want to put it like right there is sort of how they have it. And then what I want to do is we'll rename this to logo and the text will be a uh, fry emoji. If there is any fry Okay, yeah, there is a fry emoji, so boom, there we go. We've got the logo, and how they have it is the logo is like a decent size sort of right here. They use an actual image, but we're just going to use an icon like this. If you want to use an image, you could just use an image label instead, but okay, that looks pretty similar. We're just going to move the food and amount over a little bit. I mean, the food really is just what has to get moved over slightly. All right, so I made food a little bit smaller, and if we line it up like right there, I think that's actually really good pretty good and then the amount let's make this like that all right so i think that's good and then let's also hit mobile so we can see the mobile view and that looks good and another way that i like to test this to make sure that nothing looks bad is by actually adding in a bunch of numbers so let's say 30 million and see how that looks Okay, so even 30 million still looks good. It doesn't stretch too far and it doesn't look too bad. That actually looks completely fine. So the final thing that we actually need to add is we're gonna add a brand new text button inside of here and we're gonna rename this to purchase. And basically the plus button always goes on the right right here. This is what a lot of simulators always do. And basically when you click this button where you can actually purchase the coins or the currency for Robux. So we're gonna set the text of this to just simply a plus. We are gonna set the background color of of this to a greenish color like that we'll just duplicate this ui corner and drag it in right like that and boom that is already centered that's already like circular very nice and it's uh pretty small i'd say it's like that size and then also if we wanted to go directly in the center all we have to do is we'll say zero and then 0.5 and then we also want to set this to 0.5 as well and that'll perfectly center it for us we just have to set the anchor point and the position the y to that and then i think i might want to move it over slightly actually that's fine i think i do want to make it like less rounded though like maybe a 15 is actually fairly nice the background color of it's actually a little bit of a darker green so uh i'd say about there that's not too bad it's a little bit different but that's fine and then the text color of this well we want to scale it we want to make the text color white let's also set the font to gotham bold we'll hit that with a bold i like that that looks good i think that's actually the exact font that they're using i might be off a little bit but yeah that's relatively the exact same thing that they have so i think that looks pretty good now their gy might look a little bit different like it looks like they have a drop shadow but that's actually 
especially because they're using images rather than background colors and stuff like that. That's a little bit more advanced GUI, which I will show you how to do, but I think I might make an advanced version of this series or like GUI making because that's definitely a little bit more complicated while I'm trying to make this more about scripting and keep it as simple as possible. So yeah, what we got is definitely good enough for right now. Okay, so we've got all this. We have the purchase button that players can click on. We have the amount that will be displayed right here. We have the title of the currency and we have the logo of the currency. So then we're going to do is we are actually going to duplicate this frame by doing control D and we are going to rename this to coins. Now, what we're also going to do is inside of the currency holder, we're going to add a UI list layout. And as you can see, as soon as we added that, it already changed the position of how our frames are set up. So now we can see two. And the reason we can see two is because we duplicated it. So we could duplicate it. We could do it three times and we could see these are always lined up a little bit differently, which is exactly what we want. So let me rename this to coins since I deleted my previous one, the UI list layout, what we're going to do is we don't want the X to be any different because that's not what we're doing. We want the Y to be a little bit different. And how we're going to do that is we're going to set it to, I don't know, let's just try five. And now we can see they are split up a little bit. They're not too close together. And honestly, I think that might be good, but let's just do like a 7.5. Now they're a little bit further apart, which is perfect. So now we could duplicate like three. We could have like five currencies just like that. They would all be separated at the exact same spacing, which is exactly one we want. Okay, so now inside of the coins, we just have to change a couple of things. So the background color for this is actually orange instead of blue. So let's go ahead and change this to, uh, oh, these are some ugly colors. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The logo, we're going to set this to text and we're going to say uh, coin. I don't think there is the exact same coin. So let's just, we're just going to set this to like a money symbol and we will set it to that. The title, of course, we are going to set that to coins and then the money, the amount, you don't really have to set this value. It doesn't matter exactly, but let's just set that to 1000 and boom, that's all that we need to do. And we're done with that. Now, if we want to add more currencies we could do the exact same thing and change it however we wanted to and it's as easy as doing this okay so now that we have this set up what we are going to do is we are going to make a script for these to update every single time the players coins or food currency changes on their own okay so go back into your currency gui you can close so i'll just leave the currency holder open and then inside of the currency gui we are going to insert a local script and we are going to name this you can name this whatever i'm just going to name it manager because it doesn't exactly matter so now let's start assigning some variables so what we're going to say is we're going to say local currency gy equals script dot parent because that is the script parent and we can see that right there then we're going to say local currency frame equals currency gy find first child cur currency frame and make sure you spell everything right if you want to you could just copy it from here by hitting f2 on it and see i actually spelled that wrong so there we go uh, it's actually named currency holder i made that mistake my bad it's not called currency frame we named it currency holder we'll just do it like this to make it as simple as possible what i like to do is the last thing of the variable i like to name what the object actually is so this is going to be a frame it's named currency holder and it's a frame that's sort of how i like to do it to clear any possible confusion and then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to say local food frame equals currency holder find first child food and then we could actually copy we can copy that we can paste it and we could do the exact same thing but this time for coins so coins frame equals coins and there we go now we've got both of our frames so the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're also going to want to go to the top and we're going to initialize the players service and we're going to say game get service players and then we're going to want to get the actual player themselves so the player that owns this local script which would be the player themselves and we're going to say players dot local player and that's how you get the player who owns this script so then what we're going to do is we're going to go back down to the bottom we're going to say repeat wait one second until player dot leader stats and that just basically makes sure that the player's leader stats are loaded in or else it could throw an error when we try to use them all right so now what we're going to do is let's go back into food right here so we can see food and all the things that we need to do with this so we're going to say food frame we're going to grab this variable we're going to say food frame dot amount equals and then we're going to get how much the player actually has so remember how we set the leader stats up earlier we're going to say player dot leader stats dot food dot value and we could do the exact same thing for the coins so we're going to say coins frame and we're going to say that 
is equal to the coin's value. So then let's actually go ahead and start our game and see if this works. Ah, okay, I made one mistake. So we need to actually say dot text because these are text. So amount is the name of the text label and we wanna set the text of that text label to this. So dot text and dot text and then start this up and that should work perfectly. Okay, so as we can see, these changed completely to two and they're not updating now, but they did change the two, which is exactly what we wanted. And then we will also fix the updating as well. So let's actually create a quick function we're gonna say local function uh, change value now the parameters that we'll accept for this is going to be the name of the value and the name of the value which will be a string and the amount of the value which which will be a number so what we're gonna say is we're gonna say if name equals food then and we're basically gonna create a brand new string and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this and we're gonna say food frame dot amount dot text equals and then we're going to set up the string how it exactly should be so the way that we do this is we set the amount that the player has slash out of the total that they could possibly have so we're going to say amount dot 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 and then we're going to say slash and then then we need to actually set the max amount that they can currently have but for right now let's just set that to 50 for right now because we still need to actually make that system and then let's actually make this an else if name equals coins then and we will do the exact same thing oh i made this slightly off so equals equals and then we're going to do the exact same thing but this time with the coins frame and we don't exactly need to do that but we might as well and then there we go we could also put that function above the repeat statement because it's just not necessary to put it below that and then rather than doing this what we could actually say is we could just call the function we could just call the function change value and we'll say the name is food and we pass it through the value and we could do the exact same thing again but this time for coins and coins right here as well and boom there we go let's start the game and see how it looks okay there we go they are displayed exactly how they should be and that's perfect now we want these to update every single time the player gets more coins or gets more food and that's pretty simple so what we're going to say is we're going to say player dot leader stats dot dot food and this is just getting the food from the player then we're going to say dot changed we're going to connect a function to this every single time the value of food changes we are going to connect the function to it and the function that we're going to connect to it is actually going to be the change value and the parameters that we're going to pass through are going to be food and we are also going to pass through the amount of food that the player then has so we're going to say player dot leader stats dot food dot value basically the exact same thing that we're doing up here and then we can do the exact same thing, but this time, instead of for food, we're going to do it for coins. When coins value is changed, we are going to call it for coins, and then we are going to say coins as well, and then let's go ahead and start it. Ah, we just got an error, and that is because I spelled leader stats wrong. I wish, I wish Roblox would actually do something to kind of like make this easier to know that you did something wrong, but there we go. So now if you spell it correctly and start your game, it should work perfectly. Well, you might get another error again, and let's quickly fix that. I'm not exactly sure why why this error is occurring it's actually a really easy fix what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a function inside of the connect statement and the way that we do that is by just doing exactly that and we really don't have to change much at all we just say function and we create a brand new function and then we just call the function like we did previously and that's it that's all that we had to do and then let's start it up and see it functioning properly and there we go as we can see three out of 50 for it's increasing every single time just like it is on the leaderboards over here and that works works perfectly so now of course the final thing that we really need to do is this plus button right here but the thing is is we don't actually have the store set up so i think i'll go over that part where we actually get around to including development products and the store and everything else like that so that being said i think this is going to be the end of the first episode it was a little bit longer than i was hoping i'd like to keep these around 15 to 20 minutes long and i still don't even feel like we covered a ton of stuff but we did get through a good amount of things so in the next episode we will likely be learning about data stores and how to keep players data when they log out out of the game and rejoin the game because that's very important anyways if this video did help you guys out or you guys did enjoy it make sure you smash the like button and also hit the subscribe button if you guys are brand new around here and you guys want to see some more roblox development videos additionally i do have a patreon if you guys like access to all the files that i did make in this video there's a link down below in the description you guys can go subscribe to the patreon to gain access to all the files scripts and everything else like that that i made including the actual game file itself anyway i hope that you guys have a great day i'll talk to you guys later peace